historically is a scene of some problems up there. Our uh, main purpose in coming here today was to try to offer an explanation, a truthful explanation of what was going on in our minds and what precipitated the incident. And furthermore, to apologize to the black community especially, to the community at large and to the police department for causing this kind of, of a problem. Police officials say today's apology will not have any effect on possible disciplinary action against the man. City Commissioner Charles Jordan has promised action by Wednesday, the same day of the scheduled demonstration. In Northeast Portland, Kevin Baird reporting for Channel 2 News. This is CBS. Saw avowed racist Joseph Paul Franklin has been threatened. Channel 2 News. And still to come here on Channel 2 News, a gun control initiative has been filed in the state of Washington. Rebates are helping domestic car sales here in the Portland area. We'll have a full report on that from Kevin Baird. And the police internal investigation continues into the dumping of dead opossums in front of a Northeast Portland restaurant. We'll have the latest on that story. Right now, your Renault dealer is buying Renault 18i for less and selling them to you for less. Pick one up today. That's Wallace Buick, AMC Jeep Renault. John Houseman for the investment firm of Smith Barney. The New York Stock Exchange. Trading is over. Some tally their profits, some lick their wounds. And some still look for the ultimate financial formula. For over a hundred years, Smith Barney has used only one investment formula. Good old-fashioned hard work. Miss Bond, they make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. The Wind of the Water, an epic adventure. The most authentic Indian film ever made. <laughs> End Thursday at some theaters. Look for this ad in your newspaper. Rated PG for Pacific International. Her stop Deppy be turned over to him. The woman claims she was mistreated when stopped by Deppy three years ago. So the woman is suing Deppy, Deppy and the city for $35,000 damages. But the police bureau claims release of the documents would damage a 10-month-old investigation of the Special Investigations Division. Officers that have worked for the division for the past two years are suspected of perjury, theft, and planting narcotics on suspects. The Oregon Ethics Commission is one step closer tonight to getting the money it needs for an investigation of Senator Richard Groner and former lobbyist Robert Harris. The co-chairman of the Joint Ways and Means Committee agreed today to hold a yeah. court. The protesters began rallying outside police headquarters just before noon. Some carried signs calling for the resignation of Police Chief Bruce Baker, in addition to those police officers involved in the possum incident. Portland Police Spokesman Dan Noley was later to comment that the Bureau was extremely upset over the appearance of a pig's head being allowed in the parade, claiming the organizers of the march were just as guilty of offensive behavior as the possum throwers. But a protest organizer had told me earlier that pig's head was totally the act of the Socialist Workers' Party, which was not an official sponsor of the parade. Then, around 12.30, the crowd started its march toward City Hall. I think that all the officers that were involved in this should be fired immediately. We, the Black United Front, let me be very clear about that, the Black United Front has called for Bruce Baker's resignation. This incident of racial harassment that has gotten so much publicity is not the first. This is only one in a long line of incidents that have occurred. Once at City Hall, the crowd was led into a chant before a host of speakers took the platform. <laughs> One of the organizers of the protest, newspaper publisher Bruce Dessart, then voiced this demand to the crowd. One, by all officers involved in the possum incident. Other demands included the establishing of a police review board and the investigation of police policy concerning administration, training, and supervision of officers. And the support came not only from the black community. We will be doing whatever is necessary to make sure that the policy changes that Ronnie Hendler is asking, I will possibly uh, get his comments. 
but he, he did receive me. Tomorrow, the disciplinary hearing will be held for the two officers who dropped off the dead possum. Then on Friday, City Commissioner Charles Jordan and Police Chief Ruth Baker will tell of the findings of the Internal Affairs investigation and announce the fate of the officers involved in this incident. From City Hall, Pete Silberg, News 8. Rally leaders want the city to fire all officers involved in the possum incident, calling for the city to establish a citizen's police review board and an investigation of police administration. We want an end to police harassment. And, and those in today's rally say they'll be satisfied with nothing less than all 10 officers being fired. Earlier, Police Commissioner Charles Jordan acknowledged that the public should be outraged by the possum incident but condemned the situation turning into a media circus. I think we heard him the first time they had the press conferences. Why four press conferences? It tells me that someone is really trying to exploit this incident. It is a very serious incident. I understand that, and I will take the appropriate action. But I really think that those who continue to hold press conferences on a daily basis are really exploiting the situation and really causing some polarization that is really unnecessary at this time. Jordan's opinion met with this reaction from a black United Front leader. But it's only, only when the poor black man decides to stand up and say, enough is enough, we won't have no more, then they get Uncle Charles to come out here and say, you overreacted. As the community simmers over the possum incident, officers involved face a police hearing tomorrow. Demonstrators say they are not anti-police. They are only demanding that justice be done. Friday, officials will announce what disciplinary action they'll take against the officers involved. City officials say a difficult task is being made much harder. Witnesses have not come forward, crippling the decision-making process. From City Hall, Kathy Kiyomura, Channel 2 News. According to the Oregon Journal, a third Portland police officer has quit amidst a drug probe in the Special Investigations Division. According to the report, 30-year-old... ...through the jumping of dead opossums in front of a black-owned restaurant. Claudia was there and files this report as well. The rally began at noon at Portland Police Headquarters, while police officers watched from windows about 120 people from various community and political groups circled the building. The march was peaceful, and organizer Bruce Duchot and the police kept the lines of communication open. Four mounted patrolmen preceded the demonstrators to City Hall. There they gathered at the 4th Avenue entrance to listen to their supporters. School board member Herb Cawthorn, Ron Herndon of the Black United Front, State Representative Rick Bauman, and others. Bruce Broussard says this group came to support Commissioner Charles Jordan, who is in charge of the Police Bureau. We have been told in the past that the police union, the union's contract, and lack of community support have prevented his discipline of offending officers. In spite of charges of political opportunism, we are here to offer everyone who wanted to support an end to racism. The front is still decrying the police possum incident and the black child killings in Atlanta, Georgia. And a lot of people did come supporting the blacks and some to simply take advantage of the free publicity generated by the march. And while the march was primarily organized by the Black United Front to protest racism in connection with the possum incident, still there were a host of other groups who joined the march to promote their cause, even though they weren't welcome. Well, the here. point is, man, is the revolution is the only way to get rid of the oppression that black people, you know, suffer under the system. That's why we came here. The most outspoken and the least welcomed was a group promoting revolution, which was particularly sensitive to being questioned by reporters. And that dude is here, this mouthpiece for U.S. imperialism, one of the, one of the, one of the slimy newsmen going, Ugh. you know, we see what they reported. The Black United Front delayed its march, telling the unwanted groups to leave or they would be forced to leave. Emotions became more intense. I send the flag of slaves. I send the flag of slaves to refuse to fall on their knees. Yes, it's been part of it. I send the flag of slaves to say to hell. The hell with all the oppression. We gotta take The confrontations erupted into a few shoving matches. Then many of the detractors finally left. And the march got underway. Can't stand it no more. Can't stand it no more. Can't stand it no more. Won't take 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 it no more.
Ironically, those who the Black United Front was protesting against had to be on hand to make sure the march went by peaceably. Randy Ripplinger reporting for Channel 2 News. The Oregon Water Policy Review Board today... spoke to the group outside City Hall. He told them that all citizens should be outraged by that incident. But he also said that everyday news conferences and demonstrations will not affect the outcome of the police investigation. A police hearing will be held tomorrow. Commissioner Jordan will announce the results of the investigation Friday morning, as well as the disciplinary action to be taken against the police officers that were involved. Tonight's edition of the Oregon who dropped four dead possums in front of the Union Avenue restaurant, fired. The demonstrators included blacks and whites. They're angry because the police bureau hasn't done anything about the incident. They say if the possums had been dropped at a bank, a school, or a city hall, the policemen would probably have been fired. But the restaurant is owned by a black person, and these people say it's another example of racial harassment. The protest was peaceful, and after about an hour, it moved to city hall. The demonstrators blamed Commissioner Charles Jordan for not taking any action, but Jordan says witnesses haven't cooperated with the police investigation. Black leaders say they haven't been uh, dealt with fairly. Friday, Jordan will announce what he intends to do with the police officers. Attendant Ruth Baker met with the officers in a closed administrative meeting. It's likely Chief Baker has made a final decision on what disciplinary action to take Seriously, against officers situation. Jim Galloway and Craig Ward. But that decision is being discussed with Commissioner Jordan. Jordan plans to announce their decision tomorrow. Eight other police officers allegedly witnessed or participated in the incident at the Burger Barn restaurant. The investigation into their culpability is continuing. The Possum case has outraged several groups in Portland, and some are demanding the firing of all ten policemen. Today, Oregon Governor Atiyah called the incident a disgusting act, but he doesn't feel it would have been punishable under his racial harassment proposal. We must make sure that uh, this matter of racial harassment in which uh, persons, their family, or themselves, or their property, clearly can be proven to be in danger. That's what I'm talking about. The many other disgusting acts that take place, um, I don't applaud, and will continue to speak out against. Uh, however, the felony charge that I'm asking for uh, goes to a higher level than that incident. However, Atia does feel the police officers involved should be punished. Whenever a police bureau is involved in an alleged racial incident, the local FBI forwards the information to the U.S. Justice Department. That has been done by the Portland FBI officials, but the Justice Department has not, as yet anyway, called for an investigation into the Opossum case. And the city of Eugene is also the focus of some racial harassment charges. The NAACP says that racism exists in Lane County. In the possible racial harassment by Portland police. Kevin Baird reports. The possum incident has come to symbolize to some in the black community a racial insensitivity among Portland police. It happened March 12th when at least two North Precinct patrolmen dumped dead possums near a black owned restaurant. At a news conference the patrolmen called their actions a prank and apologized. But the federal government is taking the incident seriously. The FBI has sent facts surrounding the case to Washington for possible investigation. We might have two or three incidents a month where we normally get them out of the newspaper, the media, and make them available to the department and await their determination as to whether or not we should conduct a full investigation. In addition to the FBI, a Justice Department official has met several times with local leaders to help resolve the incident. Governor Tia said today that he doubts activities made public so far would fall within the purview of his president have been fired. The official announcement was made in the news conference this morning. John Davis was there. Portland Police Commissioner Charles Jordan and Police Chief Ruth Baker entered the small conference room at City Hall to make the official announcement of their decision in the Possum case. Jordan prefaced that announcement saying the police bureau must live within its own rules and regulations at all times, that when officers of the law demonstrate a lack of professionalism and misconduct, they must be disciplined. Chief Baker and I have conferred on the disciplinary action to be taken, and it was not a very easy task. And our decision was unanimous that these officers will be terminated. 
The decision to fire the officers was actually made late yesterday following a morning-long meeting between Patrolman Craig Ward, Jim Galloway, and Chief Baker. The officers were notified last night. Baker says there's no evidence so far to indicate other officers were involved in the possum incident. However, Jordan warned that if proof is established, those officers too will be disciplined. The reaction from black leaders to this morning's decision was swift. I think it's too little, too late. We still see absolutely no reason why it took two weeks to terminate two officers who admitted being responsible for probably one of the most blatant acts of racism this community has ever seen. We haven't seen any disciplinary action taken against the other officers that were involved. We do not accept the explanation that was given that they only came there because they were called. Witnesses have said there were four officers, four separate officers carrying possums. It is for certain the effects of the possum incident will not simply go away with today's decision. Police community relations strained by the ordeal will have to be improved. The Police Bureau has already announced it will also augment its training procedures to pay more attention to cultural awareness. Fired, who admitted putting dead possums in front of a burger barn restaurant on Union Avenue. Officers Jim Galloway and Craig Ward had unblemished records during five years on their North Portland beat until that incident two weeks ago. Nevertheless, Commissioner Jordan said the acts, which he called insensitive but not necessarily racially motivated, violated the rules and regulations of the police department. Everyone was embarrassed by the possum incident. But I can't help but feel that the professional police officer suffered the most. They need to know from Chief Baker and myself that we will not allow acts of this nature to debase the dignity of their profession. The people of Portland, who were also embarrassed, needs to know that their expression were also heard. Chief Baker said the evidence so far indicates that the other officers involved were not aware of the prank when they arrived on the scene. Some left when they found out. And until further investigation is concluded, other officers involved will not be punished. Stan Peters, who is president of the Portland Police Association, called the officers firing the most unjustified termination in the history of Portland. Police officers who admitted they dumped dead opossums in front of a black-owned restaurant have been fired. Police Commissioner Charles Jordan and Chief Bruce Baker said today that when officers of the law demonstrate a lack of professionalism and misconduct, they must be disciplined. Police reaction to the firings of officers Ward and Galloway was harsh. None of the officers we talked with agreed with the decision to fire the men. Off uh, officials said there is now a definite morale problem within the police department. The Burger Barn incident also raises some broader questions of how the police bureau deals with minorities. News analyst Floyd McKay has some thoughts. Floyd? Kathy, Commissioner Jordan had to fire the two officers. It was an incredibly crude act, full of racist overtones, intentional or not. But the real tragedy here is that these officers are not evil men, but products of a system that deals poorly with racial differences. It starts right with the makeup of the police force. Only 15 black officers at last count. Nothing helps racial understanding more than working side by side with people of other races. The Bureau has done a very poor job of getting and keeping minority officers. But the problem doesn't stop there. Officers in black neighborhoods ride in patrol cars and respond to trouble. As a result, the only contact many have with black citizens is under pressure. A crime, an accident, an arrest. Naturally, this gives white officers a lopsided view of black people. City funds limit the amount of foot patrols anywhere in the city. But there must be more normal contacts between officers and ordinary citizens of racial minorities. Perhaps this signals that action has to come from the commissioner, not the police union. Civil rights are not a bargaining item. A more open process is needed so citizens can believe their complaints are taken seriously. All of this becomes even more important as we add another racial minority to our community, one with language handicaps and no established leaders to make their case at City Hall. Kathy? Thank you. Century. Might cause some morale problems. Yeah, I would think so. 
Peters thinks officers Ward and Galloway had made their restitution before their firing. They are exemplary officers. Their records weren't even considered. I'm sure they were probably, they will say they were considered, but their records were not given any consideration at all or termination wouldn't have occurred. This termination was to pacify the opportunists of our city. Who are the opportunists? The commissioner is the one that said the Black United Front, Herndon, Broussard, the whole bunch of them take advantage of this situation and come screaming around marching City Hall carrying pigs on a stick and that kind of nonsense. There's no, there's nothing legitimate in that kind of a, of a march. Peter's reaction was shared with every police officer we talked with. The people I've talked to so far have all uh, expressed the, the sentiment that they really thought that it was Well, Kim, there was one uh, additional item that came to light this afternoon. At East Precinct, one-third of the afternoon shift officers called in sick. Okay. Still to come tonight on Channel 2 News, a... To involve outsiders in the functions of the division would cause problems with the police union and with laws protecting confidentiality of police business. One thing that might help, according to some community groups, would be special training to sensitize all policemen to the special problems of blacks and other minorities. Another suggestion is to avoid the problem of police burning out and turning hard by rotating them off tough assignments. But Captain of the North Precinct says that's a problem too. If he's doing a good job, uh, the officer and the people accept him. It's awful hard to justify moving him again and starting the process over because the expense of having a man go down there and procure a district when he doesn't have anybody to talk to that'll really talk to him, that costs the taxpayers a lot of money, and we don't like to lose that. Everyone that we talked to agreed that the possum incident, where uh, two incident, uh, two policemen or seven. Uh, had, had been involved in putting possums in front of a restaurant was a, was a strange uh, event. It seems as though with your saying that there have been 500 complaints in the last year, that this seems strange that this one would attract all of the publicity. Why? And why haven't they acted on the other complaints? Well, they, ha they do act on all the complaints. Some, if, if a complaint is brought in and the case is in court, they can't 
by they can't legally investigate mm -hmm. it because the Internal Affairs Division uh, policemen are required to talk to the, to their employers, mm -hmm. the police department, and they could be in, incriminating themselves if there's criminal action going on. Uh, some instances, the the uh, the sergeant that I talked to said there are many times when someone uh, reports an instance or an incident and the policeman says well I didn't do that and they were the only two people there they mm -hmm. can't resolve it so they drop the case because there's no way to prove it one way or the is this other. the first instance of overt police harassment to a black person in northeast Florida um, I think that I think that this instant this incident uh, is more more remarkable than most okay. Maybe that's the thing that Thanks. up any we have these stories and more making headlines around the world tonight and the nation. Although the hijacking of that Pakistani jetliner ended Saturday, there continue to be some new revelations. The State Department now says that Soviet and Afghan officials were the three hijackers while the plane was in Kabul. Some in the black community are other officers who witnessed the incident be disciplined. Officials say they will not. This is Kathy Kiyomura. Afternoon roll call at North Precinct was how officers Craig Ward and Jim Galloway who were removed from the force. They're involved in the possible colleagues continue on without them. Since the two were fired, morale at North and other precincts went way down. Public outrage over the chief's office. Every call from the public earlier this afternoon supported officers Ward and Galloway. I haven't had anyone that has responded saying that, yeah, maybe it, it was a good thing that they got fired. Every call that I've gotten is upset, extremely upset. And there's outrage by police officers who feel justice wasn't done in this case. They admit disciplinary action was warranted, but not termination of jobs. The union that represents Portland police will fight for Ward and Galloway's reinstatement to the force. We'll take legal action. We have, we have a process within our contract which we'll take. And uh, I've never seen the police officers of this city so mad as they are about this action here. There is dissatisfaction in the community over today's decision. Some citizens wanted all 10 officers disciplined. Two were fired. And police officials say they lost two good, experienced men. They say the whole community lost. From North Precinct, Kathy Kiyomura, Channel 2 News. East Precinct reports tonight that 10 officers on the afternoon shift called in sick. But police officials say there's no evidence that that incident is related to the firing of officers Ward and Galloway. Other precincts citywide are in operation with full patrols, those patrols covering for the absences at East Precinct. Despite strong action taken against the police officers involved, the owners of the restaurant, the Burger Barn, are still upset. Channel 2's Essex Porter is here. He talked to the owner. Richard, to many in Portland, the disciplinary action against the police officers involved in the incident would seem like a victory for the Burger Barn's owner, George Poe. But late today, Poe told me he doesn't see it that way. In the first place, Poe says, publicity about the incident has hurt business. At the time of the possum throwing incident, Poe said business was slow. Now he says it's worse. Legal deal. I ain't making enough now to pay the light bill. I get known for calls as a. Uh, you got in the possum stew, uh, we're going to bring in niggas some more possum. I don't think I, that's right. This is the thing that I'm going through with from day to day. Poe and his sons who witnessed the incident have always maintained that 10 officers were involved. Since only two were fired, Poe says that leaves eight others to continue harassing his business. So instead of feeling victorious, Poe is angry and he's very worried now. I would feel good about it if this was the end of it, but it's not the end, it's just the beginning of it. Now it's when I'm going to get a rough time from it. Poe says police have promised to show witnesses pictures of other officers that might have been involved, but they haven't so far. So he and his family are disappointed with both Commissioner Jordan and the police department for not going far enough. Richard? Okay, thank you, Essex. Gary, news tonight out of Salem also. Gary J. Rada, coordinator of the state surplus property program, pleaded innocent today to 10 criminal charges. That in connection with missing state property. Thousands of dollars worth. sensitivity among Portland police. It happened March 12th when at least two North Precinct patrolmen dumped dead possums near a black-owned restaurant. At a news conference, the patrolmen called their actions a prank and apologized.
but the federal government is taking the incident seriously. The FBI has sent facts surrounding the case to Washington for possible investigation. We might have two or three incidents a month where we normally get them out of the newspaper, the media, and, and make them available to the department and await their determination as to whether or not we should conduct a full investigation. In addition to the FBI, a Justice Department official has met several times with local leaders to help resolve the incident. Governor Tia said today that he doubts activities made public so far would fall within the purview of his anti-racism bill. We must make sure that uh, this matter of racial harassment in which a uh, person's uh, family, or themselves, or their property clearly can be proven to be in danger. That's what I'm talking about. The many other disgusting acts that take place, um, I don't applaud and will continue to speak out against. Of course, Governor Atiyah's comment should not have any effect on the investigation of possible racial harassment here in Portland. That investigation went one step further today when two of the men connected with the so-called possum incident met with Police Chief Bruce Baker. Our cameras were kept out of that meeting in which the patrolmen were given a chance to tell their side of the story. Certainly the chief will hear this, this hearing this morning. He hears the officer's version. Uh, he hears their side of the testimony. He then makes a recommendation to the commissioner. Uh, the commissioner in this case has said that, that he's going to make the final decision, but I think it's, it's a mutual decision made between the two. A decision on possible action against the patrolmen is expected tomorrow. In downtown Portland, Kevin Baird reporting for Channel 2 News. Baker, it was described as a meeting in which the officers had a chance to present their cases to the man who will judge them. The media was not allowed into that meeting at the request of the officers who apparently feel they've had enough publicity. Their only public appearance was Monday at the King neighborhood facility where the two patrolmen, Jim Galloway and Craig Ward, apologized for their actions and told reporters the incident was not racially motivated. During today's meeting between the officers and Chief Baker, Bureau spokesman Dan Noley came out to tell reporters the internal investigation into the possum incident was just about completed, but that a discrepancy has arisen in testimony. Witnesses testified they saw several officers involved, but Ward and Galloway insist they acted alone in throwing the possums out of their car and near the Burger Barn Soul Food restaurant. Throughout this whole possum ordeal, black community leaders have charged that this kind of incident is part of an ongoing wave of racial harassment throughout the state. They say it is an incident that should be included in the governor's proposed legislation on racial harassment. But during an interview with News 8's Steve Irmo today, the governor explained why it is not. That incidentally was a disgusting act, so I don't say that it was something that uh, I applaud. However, I, I do not believe that the person could prove under at least the bill we introduced that uh, he felt his life or property were threatened, which is, of course, the, the emphasis in the bill, and therefore I don't think would have fit. It is safe to assume that we will not hear much more publicly, perhaps from the officers themselves involved in this possum case, but tomorrow morning here at City Hall we will hear from their superiors, Police Commissioner Charles Jordan and Police Chief Bruce Baker, who must now decide their fate. From outside City Hall, I'm John Davis reporting for News 8. Meanwhile, a Eugene chapter of the colored people, there is racism in Lane County. The NAACP claims it's hidden and that most white people are unaware of it. The chapter is calling for an ordinance that would make racial harassment a Class C felony, punishable by a fine of up to $10,000. The Eugene group called a news conference today in response to recent threats of violence received by a black woman, woman rather, and her children in Eugene. The 10 o'clock news with Ted Warren and Emerald Ye. Sports with Pat Helberg. Weather, Trish Moss. And now, Ted Warren. Good evening. Two Portland policemen have been fired for dumping dead opossums outside a black-owned restaurant. The incident happened two weeks ago and brought outrage from the black community. That anger has not ended, and now the policemen's union is upset. Claudia Brown has the story. With that, Commissioner Charles Jordan and Police Chief Bruce Baker expect the laws of this city to be enforced, then I sure in the hell expect the laws of this bureau to be enforced. I have requested what we want to accomplish. Said Jordan to protect the dignity and professionalism of the police force. Officers Jim Galloway and Craig Ward said the incident was a foolish prank designed to relieve tension among Portland's North Precinct policemen. 
In an earlier public apology, they insisted it was not intended as a racial slur. The restaurant's owner, George Poe, charged it was done because he has complained about police harassment in the past. Galloway and Ward denied that, too. Earlier in this week, about 150 people marched on City Hall to demand an incident. Witnesses say there were eight other officers who may have participated. Police are still investigating, but Chief Baker says it appears they will not be disciplined. No. The other officers uh, participated in no way in either the gathering of the possums or the throwing of the possums uh, in front of the burger barn. That and the denial of racial overtones outrage not only the Poe family, but several community groups. Valerie Robertson spoke for her father, George Poe, because he is too angry to talk on camera. Officers that was there at that time should be disciplined. They are officers of the law. We're paying our tax dollars for them to protect our rights. And our rights have not been protected. They have been violated. For him to continue to say that he does not feel it was racial harassment, it befuddles the mind. The anger is not yep. limited. At the East Precinct House tonight, the absences come after two police officers in the North Precinct were fired today. Those officers were being disciplined for throwing dead possums in front of a Northeast Portland restaurant. Some police officers have said the firings were unfair, but it's not known whether tonight's absences are a form of protest. And late tonight, the police are refusing to comment as to whether the high number of absences will continue. The public announcement of the fired officers came early this morning from city... Conferred. Jordan said pressure from the community did play a part in the decision, but some groups took advantage of the incident. It did not take three press conferences and a march on City Hall for us to get the message. It's a serious effect, I mean a serious incident, and we knew that. So yes, I think certain members of the black community overreacted. The black community, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me finish. The black community did not overreact. <coughs> Jordan said he does not believe the incident was racially motivated. He expressed anger with some blacks who feel other officers who witnessed the incident should also be disciplined. This is Kathy Kiyomura. Afternoon roll call at North Precinct was how officers Craig Ward and Jim Galloway began their day. The two were removed. That's not what he was after. He's not looking to get no one fired. But he wanted this situation rectified. And I don't think he feels it's been rectified because we've got eight other officers that are still over in the neighborhood that we are going to have to deal with. The police themselves disagree with the firings. The head of the Portland Police Association, Stan Peters, thinks they're games. We don't want them around here. The Portland Police Association will appeal the two firings. All the black leaders are demanding that the other eight officers be disciplined. Virginia striking question was to pacify the opportunists of our city. Every police officer news they talked with today said the same thing. What the officers did was stupid, but they didn't deserve to be fired. As of tonight, half the officers working the North Precinct, where the incident occurred, have put in for training. Alleged police beatings of union organizers. Tomorrow, that report will be the focus of a renewed talk at... ...over today's decision. Some citizens wanted all ten officers disciplined. Two were fired. And police officials say they lost two good, experienced men. They say the whole community lost. From North Precinct, Kathy Kiyomura, Channel 2 News. Despite the fact that both police officers involved in the incident were fired, the owners of the Burger Barn restaurant are unsatisfied tonight. Owner George Poe says publicity has hurt his business. Poe maintains 10 policemen were involved in the incident. He says the other eight are still free to harass his business. Poe feels Commissioner Jordan and the police department stopped short of taking satisfactory disciplinary action. They've been holding a vote questioning the leadership of both City Commissioner Charles Jordan and Police Chief Bruce Baker. This no-confidence vote is unprecedented, and our reporter Kevin Baird is standing by live at the police lodge with a report. Kevin, how's the vote going so far? Well, Stan, the polls behind me close in about an hour. There are about 500 eligible to vote, and while there's no telling exactly how many have cast their ballots, a couple of union people here have told us that they're getting a better turnout than even a typical contract vote. 
Full-time patrolmen began voting early this morning at their lodge off Southeast Alder Street. It is the first confidence vote a Portland police chief or a city commissioner has ever faced. And while it carries no legal weight, it does show how stirred up policemen are over the so-called possum incident. You recall March 12th, two North Precinct patrolmen dumped dead possums next to a black-owned restaurant. They called it a prank, but facing some pressure, Commissioner Charles Jordan fired the men. The vote going on now asks whether patrolmen have confidence in both Jordan and Chief Baker's leadership. If it's a positive vote, as far as the feelings of the association members are concerned, then that will be presented to the, the mayor of the city of Portland to do with as he sees fit. But that all, the, all those votes do is express the feelings of the membership as to the uh, commissioner in charge of their particular bureau. And uh, the, the mayor is the one that ultimately decides that. So you'll present the results to the mayor. If you vote no confidence, you're hoping that the two people will be released or fired or reassigned? Reassigned, I would hope. As they were voting, patrolmen were offered light blue ribbons to wear in support of the fired men. There were t-shirts for sale to raise money, and behind the ballot boxes, placards for tomorrow's march. Chief Baker refused to comment on today's vote, but Commissioner Jordan did have some stern words. I think they're challenging the public. I think they want to find out what the public will allow them to get away with, and they feel that they can do anything, and all they have to do is go out and apologize and say they're sorry, and then we're going to reinstate them. With a new city commissioner just elected, you might think this would be a good time to reassign bureaus. A spokesman for Mayor Ivancy says he is keeping an eye on all these activities related to the possum incident, though he is not expected to reassign the police bureau yet. Back to you, Stan and Kim. Kevin, once again, the vote has no legal standing. It's not binding at all. No, it's not binding. They're hoping to go back to Mayor Ivancy and ask him to reassign the people in question. Okay, thank you very much. Kevin Barrett, live at the Police Lodge. Okay, and you stay with us. We'll be right back with more news. There's a massive protest tomorrow that could attract up to a thousand people, all in support of two officers who were fired for their part in throwing opossums in front of a black-owned restaurant. We get more on tomorrow's demonstration from John Davis. Portland police officers spent the day completing about a hundred placards they will carry during tomorrow's parade and demonstration. The organizers have gone to great lengths to ensure the slogans on the posters are not inflammatory, but that their message is clear. At the same time, the 500 eligible officers in the Policemen's Association were also taking a vote of confidence in Police Chief Bruce Baker and... ...dead opossums in front of a black-owned restaurant in North Portland. The black community called it racial harassment and called for the officers to be fired. Commissioner Jordan and Chief Baker agreed, and the officers were fired. Since then, the Portland Police Association has taken some action of its own. Yesterday, it held a news conference to announce it plans in March tomorrow in support for the fired officers and for all city police officers. Today, the association took a no-confidence vote. The polls opened at 6 a.m. and will close at 6 p.m. The no-confidence vote is unique because it's a first for Portland Police Bureau and because of its turnout. We begin tomorrow morning around 11 a.m. at Waterfront Park and work its way up here to City Hall just before noon. The Portland Policemen's Association has contended all along that the policeman's firing was really due to political pressure. It is not uncommon, then, that the association itself would try its own brand of politics to get the officers reinstated by taking its case directly to the mayor. From outside City Hall, I'm John Davis reporting for News 8. Our news analyst, Floyd McKay, will have some comments on that march a little bit later in tonight's broadcast. A Cleveland High School student and a Benson High School student were stabbed yesterday. I'd like to request another commissioner, but uh, I don't see how any mayor in any city could even consider anything like that because... All the mayor would be doing is telling the public that I don't run my city, the police union run my city. Jordan says even if he lost the bureau, he knows he did right in firing the officers. He says he represents the citizens of Portland. Members of the police association say he represents very few, and that the citizen response they've gotten for reinstating the officers has been overwhelming. Meanwhile, last-minute preparations for tomorrow's march continue, and the association says it expects to have 10 to 15,000 signatures in favor of reinstatement to hand over to the mayor's office at the end of the march. Sandy, when are those vote results going to be made public? Well, Linda, Stan Peters, the association president, says he hopes to have the results made public in a couple of hours, and if they are, then we'll have it on the 11 o'clock. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll be waiting for that. Tillamook County. The overwhelming majority of the public supports the police, but on the possum case, they deserve to march alone. Kathy? Thank you.
in just a moment. Jim Little. Mr. Charles Jordan and Police Chief Bruce Baker. The no confidence vote was triggered by the firings of two patrolmen who threw dead possums in front of a black owned restaurant. The ballots are being counted at this hour at the Portland Police Athletic Association. Kevin Baird is standing uh, by live now with this report. Kevin? Well, Dick, as you mentioned, uh, the ballots are being counted now upstairs in the third floor. We hope to have the results sometime later in the show. The ballots will be presented to Mayor Ivancy possibly tomorrow. They have no legal weight. The mayor will also be presented with these signed petitions. And we understand there's been as many as 7,000 signatures in opposition to the firing of both Gataway and Ward. Also, if you can see behind me, if we can move the camera in behind me, there are signs here prepared for tomorrow's march. I'm sure most of our viewers have heard about that police march. It will start tomorrow morning, I believe, at 10 o'clock at Waterfront Park. They're inviting anybody who supports them to join them. And we'll talk about some of their grievances, not just the possum incident, but a much more broad issue at stake here a little later in the show with Stan Peters and with Commissioner Jordan. Back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin. No confidence vote all day long, questioning the leadership of both City Commissioner Charles Jordan and Chief Bruce Baker. Kevin Baird is standing by live with the president of the Portland Police Association, Stan Peters, and Commissioner Jordan. Kevin, how's it going so far? Well, the vote is over. We're here with Stan Peters from the police union, and we're going to ask him right now how it turned out, if we could. I can't tell you right now. I'll be happy to release that to you tomorrow, Kevin. Is there any reason why you're holding it? We're going to validate all the... Uh all the ballots make sure that they're uh, 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 that they're valid and we're going to do that tonight and uh, we'll have an exact count for you it'll be a correct count tomorrow all right now somebody here told me that it was a vote of no confidence am i going to be wrong in assuming that no that's a correct assumption okay now the vote is not legal it doesn't have any legal weight it's not going to uh, force uh, mayor ivancy to do really anything why are you doing it well, I think all public employees have the right to express satisfaction or dissatisfaction for their uh, administrators, for their boss, for their contracts we vote on. And this is our way of telling the boss of the city, which is the mayor, uh, that we either have confidence or no confidence. Well, however, the vote turns out in the administration of the police bureau at this time. And it's, uh, it, has, it has no legal bearing, as you say, or weight, but it, uh, it's something that I think that uh, needs to be said and that the boss of the city, which is the mayor, uh, should consider. What about that, Commissioner? Is that an appropriate way to make their feelings felt? Uh, within their, um, uh, it's a privilege they have if they would like to do that. I, I think Mr. Peters was correct. It's not going to carry any weight at all. I don't think you'll find any mayor worth uh, his or her salt who would accept a, a demand like that from a union and make changes in his administration because if he does that, he might as well turn his gavel over to the union. So you think this is a power play on the union's part then? Of course it is. I mean, I think that what they're trying to do is uh, they are trying to force the mayor to change uh, the Bureau assignment, and I don't think that Mayor Ivancy is going to consider that. What about that, Stan? Is it a power play? It's no power play at all. It's something that just uh, continually has, has grown over the, uh, the last several months, and it uh, was, uh, was uh, capped off by the termination, the illegal, ter not the illegal termination, but the excessive uh, discipline administered against these two officers, which was termination. That's Officer Warden Galloway. That disrupted the uh, uh, the morale even more so of the members of the police association to the point where they had to do something to express their dissatisfaction or satisfaction as I say how the vote turns out to the mayor uh, no, the, by, the, by the, saying that uh, the mayor is not uh, worth his salt if he listens to this kind of, uh, of, uh, of advice from a, from a union is, is incorrect I think uh, we're the ones that know whether or not we're satisfied the morale of the city the police bureau is extremely important to the association I think it's down lower now than it's ever been there's no way the police officers can perform the task that we perform daily with the risk involved on the streets with very low morale. And when we see that to be the case, in our opinion, we have to do something about it, and that's what this particular vote should reflect, and we'll let you know tomorrow. What about that, Commissioner? If morale is so low, we've been hearing that uh, the past couple of days. There must be some wrong. Well, I don't think we have to be concerned about whether or not the mayor or the union is satisfied. I think we have to be, be concerned with whether the public is satisfied. You know, we're all public servants, the police officers as well as myself we work for the public and I think that um, you know this expression of my of, uh, of my decision uh, is is fine with me but I just do not think as I indicated that no mayor worth their salt will change bureau assignment because of a demand from a union I did not say that you know he would not consider this I just don't think Mayor Ivancy is going to consider it but uh, no I don't see any difficulty with the vote or the march I think the outcome uh, is obvious. I think it was an exercise that uh, 
they did not have to go through because they could have told me that there was a no confidence vote. Had they, know, had they known that the outcome would not have been what they wanted, they wouldn't have gone through all of this. So I'm not that naive to believe that it's going to be a vote of confidence. So, you know, let's not game each other. It must have some effect on at least the way you feel about the thing, Commissioner. I mean, uh, some in the community have asked <coughs> that you be replaced, and now the police union, presumably, again, this is assumption, has uh, voted no confidence. Uh, do you feel a little nervous? No, not at all. I was voted in by the people, and I don't think the people have asked that I be replaced. I think you're talking about some police officers in the union. But no, I have no fears whatsoever. What about that, Stan? Well, the people have been involved in this, and they're involved in it, and they have been for the last two days, which is an extraordinary event in the, in the uh, history of this city. We've had a, uh, a, a petition that has been circulated by uh, off-duty police officers for the last two days, and the, uh, the results are extraordinary on that. Um, I think the calls that the mayor's office received, he received ni uh, 96 calls, four were uh, in favor of the termination, and the rest were opposed. The chief's office received 79 calls, four were in favor, 75 opposed. These are polls taken by the mayor's office and the chief's office. The people are involved in this. I mean, it's, uh, it, it explains itself by the fact we're standing here talking about it, that it's a people event. And the, the commissioner today said that we're pushing the people of the city around. That's not giving the people of the city any credit, whatever, if, we, if they can be pushed around. They, as we, have the right to express our opinion, and, uh, and I think they're doing that, and they're going to get a better chance to do it in the future. A quick question. Do you really believe that Mayor Ivancy will reassign the police bureau because of this? That's a decision Mayor Ivancy has to make based upon the information that we give him tomorrow. Dan, thank you. Commissioner, thank you. Hey, Kevin, thank you very much. As he just mentioned, we will have that uh, no confidence vote tomorrow. Stan Peter says that's as soon as he's going to release it to us. We'll be right back. They're protesting the firing of two officers who were dismissed from the force after they admitted leaving a number of opossums at a North Portland restaurant. John Davis is at City Hall for this live report. John? Well, Kathy, what we're looking at now is the. Uh, an empty entrance to City Hall, but just about 30 minutes ago, we had a crowd here, estimated about a thousand supporters, police association members who came out uh, in support, private citizens who came out in support of the two officers who were fired uh, last week by Commissioner uh, Jordan and Police Chief Bruce Baker. Uh, this parade actually uh, began uh, early this morning, about an hour or so ago, uh, at City at uh, the Waterfront Park and traversed his way up to City Hall here. Uh, we can roll that tape now, and we will see a crowd that began gathering probably about 10 o'clock, so an hour before the parade. And uh, at the head of this particular group is Stan Peters, the president of the uh, Policemen's Association. Uh, there you see officers, their families, and certainly uh, friends of the officers. Uh, little children and a crowd, as I say, between 800 and 1,000. It was a very impressive march. It was a very peaceful march. It was everything that the association had wanted it to be, uh, despite its fears that uh, perhaps there would be uh, stragglers and, uh, and, and groups of people that they were not very uh, sure about. Uh, their fears were not borne out here. It was a very, very peaceful march. All along the parade route, the demonstration route, uh, there were people um, that uh, yelled out their support and uh, waved and gave thumbs up signs to this group, a very impressive group as you see it there gathering at uh, City Hall. They heard a rally from Association President uh, Peters and then they uh, took petitions that have been signed by various citizens groups into City Hall to be presented to Mayor Frank Ivansay. And that was the scene just about 35 minutes ago or so. With me now, live in City Hall here, are the two patrolmen that have been the focal point of all this controversy, Jim uh, Galloway and Craig Ward. Jim, first of all, what was your feeling as you saw the crowd assembling and, and leaving that staging area this morning for this protest march? I was uh, overwhelmed. It's gratified. The showing of support, our officers, citizens, many, many citizens, I think, uh, I don't know, I'm just overwhelmed by it. And your feelings, Craig? Oh, we were very much heartened by it, very much so. Uh, it's very gratifying to see this, this type of a turnout and display, uh, despite the inclement weather. So we were very pleased. How have you been taking this, this entire controversy? Well, uh, we've never been through anything like this before. Uh, it's all very new to us, and it's, uh, 
No, I'd be kidding you if I said it, it wasn't rough. Sure, it, it, it's been tough. There's been some lost sleep and some tense moments and, uh, and quite a bit of uh, difficulty. Uh, but I think uh, we're on the way up again. And, uh, you know, whatever happens, we can handle. We can, we can cope with it now. It's, uh, it's all I need to keep. Thank you, gentlemen. It is a political moment as far as the Policemen's Association is concerned, and they will seize that moment, I'm sure, on behalf of these two officers and their reinstatement. From outside City Hall, I'm John Davis, reporting for News 8. John, before you go, could yes. you tell me whether or not they announced the results of the vote of confidence in uh, Commissioner Jordan and Bruce Baker? No, that announcement has not been made just yet, but uh, we are going to go inside and get that information, and it will be part of our story at 5 o'clock today, Kathy. That Thank was a very significant vote, though. Thank you very much, John. The possum incident has caused more than a share of problems and publicity for the Portland Police Bureau, but it's not the only thing that's been going on. An underground sting operation run by... About 1,000 police and sympathizers marched to City Hall and demand that two fire patrolmen be reinstated. A full report next on Channel 2 News. In the news, angry patrolmen and their sympathizers marched down Portland streets this morning, protesting the firing of two fellow officers. The men were fired last week over the so-called opossum incident, and the police union wants them reinstated. Kevin Baird has the story for us. Anybody with any signed petitions that they haven't turned in, bring them up here. Patrolmen and their sympathizers met at Waterfront Park late this morning. It was raining, so pro-union placards were handed out to serve as crude umbrellas. When the rain stopped, the march began. As you can see from this bird's eye view, there were roughly 1,000 demonstrators marching past police headquarters, and some in the building looked down from their offices. There were mounted police for protection, and just about everybody donned ribbons, green ones in sympathy of murdered Atlanta children, blue ones in support of the men fired over the possum incident. You think it was unfair? I certainly do. How was it unfair? Wasn't it a uh, bad thing to dump possums in front of a, a restaurant like that? Yeah, it was. But they're being punished a lot more severely than they should have for doing it. I think that we have rights like any other citizen does, and I think we've been denied them probably more than any other minority group there is. Above all, the march was peaceful, even subdued. When they reached City Hall, the union president spoke out. There can be no doubt that Officer Gordon Galloway were among the finest on the Portland Police Bureau. We're only asking that they be judged on those records and on the facts and not on the basis that it is politically expedient. Patrolmen also voted no confidence in Chief Baker and handed over petitions signed, they say, by 10,000 against the firing. Ironically, since Mayor Ivancy was in Denver, the acting mayor was Commissioner Jordan. He was not here to accept the petitions. In downtown Portland, Kevin Baird reporting for Channel 2 News. Most residents were quick to charge that the was just one of a series of racially motivated events that have occurred in recent years. And no one interviewed felt the firing of the two officers was unjustified. I think they should just stay fired. Uh, Why? Why? Because they had no doing that sort of thing. I think it was kind of in a way. I think that we should try to protest about the people's coming to us. Now, I really believe that's wrong. I knew that during the last election, when they told me that they would not support me during the election. That was, um, it was obvious then, that was a no confidence vote. But uh, that doesn't disturb me. What would disturb me if uh, they had a just cause for doing that? Jordan says he's concerned about the credibility of the police department. He says the department's popularity is at an all-time low. The chief of that department is concerned about his popularity. 326 officers voted no confidence in you. What's your response to that? Well, my response to that is that I consider that a very serious matter, but I would have no further comment at this time. Today's organizer, Stan Peters, says 10,000 signatures have been collected from people who want to come together as, as a larger group instead of um, 
sitting around in the precincts in small groups and just talking to themselves. So I, I, I think it was probably healthy to uh, give them a chance to ventilate, although I'm sorry it had to happen. But when asked about the no-confidence vote taken by the police union against Commissioner Jordan, Baker was noncommittal. Well, I had uh, a standard response to that question, which is that uh, I do consider it a serious matter, and but I have no further comment on it at this time. And we haven't heard the end of the possum incident yet. It is now going to arbitration, a police form of a court trial. In Portland, Paula Gunnis, Channel 2 News. The following the at the march this morning. That they haven't turned in, bring them up here. Patrolmen and their sympathizers met at Waterfront Park late this morning. It was raining, so pro-union placards were handed out to serve as crude umbrellas. When the rain stopped, the march began. As you can see from this bird's eye view, there were roughly 1,000 demonstrators marching past police headquarters, and some in the building looked down from their offices. There were mounted police for protection, and just about everybody donned ribbons, green ones in sympathy of murdered Atlanta children, blue ones in support of the men fired over the possum incident. You think it was unfair? I certainly do. How was it unfair? Wasn't it a bad thing to dump possums in front of a, a restaurant like that? Yeah, it was. But they're being punished a lot more severely than they should have for doing it. I think that we have rights like any other citizen does, and I think we've been denied them probably more than any other minority group there is. Above all, the march was peaceful, even subdued. When they reached City Hall, the union president spoke out. There can be no doubt that Officer Gordon Galloway were among the finest on the Portland Police Bureau. We are only asking that they be judged on those records and on the facts and not on the basis that it is politically expedient for the police commissioner to decree that these men forfeit their jobs. The men who lost their jobs, Patrolman Jim Galloway and Craig Ward, were applauded and Ward's wife thanked everybody. We just love you. Even my photos, even my baby boy. In regards to the vote that we had, in regards to a vote of confidence conducted only by the Portland Police Bureau Association, Members, the vote on Commissioner Jordan was 411 to 10. The patrolmen also voted no confidence in Chief Baker and handed over petitions signed, they say, by 10,000 against the firing. Ironically, since Mayor Ivancy was in Denver, the acting mayor was Commissioner Jordan. He was not here to accept the petitions. Kevin Baird reporting for Channel 2 News. I'm Paula Gunnis. At the same time people were gathering for the police rally at Waterfront Park, phones were ringing off the hook in Mayor Ivancy's office. 140 calls were received today in support of Police Commissioner Charles Jordan. 52 calls against the firing of officers Ward and Galloway. An aide of the mayor says he suspects an organized phone campaign is underway, possibly due in part to comments Jordan made on Channel 2 News just last night saying he doesn't consider the recent no-confidence vote taken by the police union a serious threat. Today's rally was a culmination of sorts, with the possum incident being uh, the main source of conversation in police precincts in the last week. And according to Portland Police Chief Bruce Baker, the march seemed to help morale. It gave the um, police officers who were concerned over this matter a chance to come together to demonstrate their solidarity. and. Uh, it gave them a chance to come together as, as a larger group instead of um, sitting around in the precincts in small groups and just talking to themselves. So I, I, I think it was probably healthy to uh, give them a chance to ventilate, although I'm sorry it had to happen. But when asked about the no-confidence vote, Baker responded by giving his standard answer, that he does consider it a serious matter, but has no further comment at this time. In downtown Portland, Paula Gunnis, Channel 2 News. This is Kevin Baird live at the Portland International Airport where Mayor Frank Ivancy has just arrived. We hoped to get him for a live interview, but he slipped out the back way, so we're going to have to wait a few minutes. He's meeting with aides right now, conferring over this possum incident. He says it's a serious enough issue that he's going to have to sit down and talk about what happened today. We'll have that report later tonight at 11 o'clock. Back to you, Stan. Okay, thank you very much. Kevin Baird live at the Portland International Airport. Six to 90. Baker says the situation is serious, but he will not comment on what he plans to do. He'll wait and see if Mayor Ivancy takes any action. Although Baker admits police morale is bad, he thinks his officers will continue to do their jobs. 
Is this just because of the possum incident and the firing of the two officers? Or do you think it's deeper than that? I think that it's over the possum incident and the firing of the two officers. And um, I, I think that it's uh, an expression over that issue. I don't think it goes beyond that. Mayor Ivancy is out of town until Monday. When he returns, he'll have the petition signatures and the no-confidence vote to ponder. The police union is asking him to take the police bureau from Commissioner Jordan's control. And either way, it's a decision which could have serious political implications. At City Hall, I'm Claudia Brown reporting for the 10 o'clock news. A third member of a Portland police division under investigation has now quit the force. Detective Frank O'Donnell is the third member of the Police Bureau's Special Investigations Unit to resign. That division is being investigated. The mayor hopes there will be no further demonstrations over the incident. Ivancy says he'll talk with Commissioner Jordan and the police chief next week. If he disagrees with the decision, the mayor could remove Jordan as head of the Police Bureau. And Kim, in just a minute, we'll uh, take a look at that police demonstration march this morning. Because first of all, we're going to Steve Arena, a big night for the Blazers. That's right, Kim, the Blazers decision, because I do not have the information on how they came about that decision. They didn't ask me for my opinion. I will look at the police reports, consult with them further. Whether I reaffirm their position or disagree with them, I don't know. That's, that's for the future to unfold. The reaction to today's rally from the black community was bitter, and those questioned said the opossum incident was just one of a series of racially motivated events that have occurred over the years. Another former member of that situation would possibly become volatile. this particular time is to meet uh, with the chief and Jordan uh, in the near future. I'd like to look at the, the reports of the investigation and then probably draw some conclusions from that. You, are you saying you have no conclusions drawn yet? No, I haven't. Uh, I was not consulted as far as the uh, discipline of these officers. And I feel before I say anything else, uh, I have to have more information. Ivancy refused to pledge support for Commissioner Jordan or rule out a change of commissioner for the police bureau. The prime suspect in the I-5... I certainly do. How was it unfair? Wasn't it a uh, bad thing to jump possums in front of a, a restaurant like that? Yeah, it was. But they're being punished a lot more severely than they should have for doing it. I think that we have rights like any other citizen does, and I think we've been denied them probably more than any other minority group there is. Above all, the march was peaceful, even subdued. When they reached City Hall, the union president spoke out. There can be no doubt that Officer Gordon Galloway were among the finest on the Portland Police Bureau. We are only asking that they be judged on those records and on the facts and not on the basis that it is politically expedient for the police commissioner to decree that these men forfeit their jobs. The men who lost their jobs, Patrolman Jim Galloway and Craig Ward, were applauded, and Ward's wife thanked everybody. We just love you. Even my brother, even my baby boy. In regards to the vote that we had, in regards to a vote of confidence conducted only by the Portland Police Bureau Association members, the vote on Commissioner Jordan was 411 to 10. The patrolman also voted no confidence in Chief Baker and handed over petitions signed, they say, by 10,000 against the firing. Ironically, since Mayor Ivancy was in Denver, the acting mayor was Commissioner Jordan. He was not here to accept the petitions. Kevin Baird reporting for Channel 2 News. As demonstrators gathered at Waterfront Park this morning for the protest march, phone calls were already pouring in at police headquarters. The majority of the callers favored the firings. That's the opposite of last week's reaction when only 10% of the callers held that opinion. At Mayor Ivancy's office, 140 callers supported Commissioner Jordan. 52 callers opposed the firings. According to Police Chief Bruce Baker, today's march may have been a boost for morale. It gave the um, police officers who were concerned over this matter a chance to come together to demonstrate their solidarity. And uh, it gave them a chance to come together as, as a larger group instead of um, sitting around in the precincts in small groups and just talking to themselves. So I, I, I think it was probably healthy to uh, give them a chance to ventilate, although I'm sorry it had to happen. When asked about the no-confidence vote, Baker said that he considers it a serious matter, but declined any further comment. 
The nation has its first look at President Reagan tonight since the shooting on Monday. Mr. Reagan still in the hospital with a slight temperature. Mr. Reagan continues to make progress in his recovery, but his temperature climbed this evening after dropping this afternoon, and that caused some concern among the doctors. And when the Communist Revolutionary Party were told they couldn't fly their red banner in the parade. The Communists refused to lower their flag, so they were escorted out by members of the Black United Front. Expelling the communists lost the demonstration about a dozen marchers, but still left a chanting line of people almost three blocks long. Demonstrators carried placards protesting a variety of grievances, welfare cuts, the unsolved murders of black children in Atlanta, Georgia, unemployment, the loss of affirmative action programs, and racism in general. But it was the incident the community now calls the Possum Tossin that likely brought out most of this crowd for the parade and rally. The message was very clear. Those officers were saying, we think black people have absolutely no rights. They have absolutely nothing that we have to respect. We will throw dead animals in front of your establishment, call our friends, and we all gonna have a belly laugh at your expense. They weren't just laughing. Don't think they were just laughing at that one man. Don't think they were just laughing at that one store. They were laughing at all of us who live in this community. That's who the laugh was supposed to be on. In his speech, Black United Front leader Ron Herndon had special criticism for Portland's mayor, Frank Ivancy. How is it? How is it he has been so amazingly quiet on this issue? He's supposed to be the man that always speaks his mind and tells it like it is. On this issue, Frank Ivancy has been just as quiet as a prostitute in church. Herndon urged the crowd to zero in on Frank Ivancy and at the same time to force the rest of the city council to speak out on the possum incident and its consequences. John Tuttle, News 8. Mayor Ivancy has tried to stay clear of the possum incident at a news conference last night. The mayor said he wasn't consulted on the question of police disciplining, that he's drawn no conclusions and hasn't seen or read any of the police reports. He's promised to meet with Police Chief Baker and Police Commissioner Jordan sometime next week. But beyond that, the mayor is not committing himself. I will look at the police reports, consult with them further. Whether I reaffirm their position or disagree with them, I don't know. That's, that's for the future to unfold. Some progress reported in negotiations to end a strike at Cascade Steel Mill. Portland worry about a crime wave hitting town. Last year, almost all crime rates went up, and the beginning of this year, the figures are even worse. In last week's budget message, Mayor Ivancy suggested cutting back on police administration to make room for more cops on the beat. At first, Jordan, but by today it was clear they'd struck a deal. That deal amounts to a trade-off. Jordan will get less money than he wants to run the bureau, but he will select where to cut services. There will also be 16 more patrolmen added on. Since the staff worked out the compromise behind closed doors, there wasn't much to talk about during the council session this afternoon. There was, however, one welcome surprise for lawmen. In order to keep expenses down, police often wait a while before filling employment vacancies. One of the things that we, we find it necessary to do is we watch this labor turnover figure is that um, usually we start out the year in pretty good shape and then we have to watch what the deficit's beginning to look like and uh, it's toward the end of the fiscal year that we'll end up with more vacancies. You're, you're trying to play bookkeeper at the same time trying to maintain a bureau of police. If we've given you the wrong figures, we'll have to live with those figures and adjust those. But I, I think the message that uh, we have uh, said in the past, put that full compliment on the street and uh, we'll take care of the rest of it one way or the other. By allowing police to fully staff itself, Ivancy has followed through on his promise to beef up street protection. But that money has to come from somewhere and could mean, eventually, a cut in other programs. 
in downtown Portland. Kevin Baird reporting for Channel 2 News. And by the way, during that budget hearing, the council agreed to expand the popular mountain patrol. We may be seeing more patrolmen checking their beats on horseback instead of in a car. A group of local church officials today publicly denounced the so-called opossum incident in which two patrolmen dumped dead opossums next to a black-owned restaurant. The group is called Ecumenical Ministries of Oregon, and it met... Washington, Kelso police officers arrested 22-year-old Ralph Edward Dixon on charges of possession of 17 pounds of marijuana. Arrested with Dixon was 40-year-old Carl Bud Hampton. He was arraigned today on similar charges. Police say the grass was found in two suitcases in the trunk of a car which Dixon had rented. In addition, what police say is 26 grams of pure rock cocaine was seized from Hampton's home. It has a street value of around $8,000. Also seized were amounts of mushrooms, LSD, and mescaline. Not arrested in Beaverton yesterday on illegal in recruiting more minorities to its staff. Twelve new members were sworn in today at Central Precinct. Police Chief Bruce Baker did the honors. The new members include five women, three of them black. Two black men and an Asian man were also sworn in. After today's swearing in, there are now 49 women on the police force. 35 of the 662 police officers are minorities. And now we turn to Steve Arena. KPTV Channel 12, Portland. People will do almost anything to get their hands on a Major League Baseball. But here's a sure-handed way to get your own. It's the same kind Mike Schmidt and George Brett knock out of the ballpark. And it's yours absolutely free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. 